partner world, Mr. Joy and honored guests, mothers and fathers, family members and graduates of the class of 2013. I spend much of my time with students talking about the virtues. This is my last chance to address that subject with our departing graduates. So I thought it was fitting on such a festive occasion to say a word about joy. Before the philosophers and theologians get nervous, I should qualify what I just said. Joy, joy is not a virtue in the strict sense. The church calls it a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Aquinas refers to it as an act or the effect of the virtue of charity. But I'm going to talk about it anyway. Joy is hard to pin down because it's often confused with other things like pleasure. Zadie Smith, the British novelist, cautions against that confusion in a recent column in the New York Review. A lot of people seem to feel, she says, that joy is only the most intense version of pleasure. Arrived at by the same road, you simply have to go a little farther down the track. But, she continues, joy and pleasure are different in a more fundamental sense. Joy is a more profound sentiment. <laughs> profound, Smith says, but less agreeable. Joy has a downside that troubles her, an element of fear and sadness. A spouse or a child who brings us intense joy inevitably changes or dies and leaves us behind. Smith says about joy what Julian Barnes once said about mourning. It hurts just as much as it's worth. In the end, she decides it's worth the trouble. If we've never experienced joy, she writes, how would we live? This is true as far as it goes, and yet there's something missing in Smith's account. She's right about joy and pleasure being different, but in her picture, joy too is temporary. The house always wins, unless you have the good fortune to die while you're still holding good cards. Smith's account is like Dorothy's view of Kansas before the tornado, or like Harry Potter's life with the Dursleys. They're all unaware of a whole magical world that exists side by side with their own and influences its activities. Smith leaves God out of the picture. The psalmist tells us that we find real joy in God's love. Psalm 126 says, The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. This is not the, evan the evanescent emotion that Smith fears. Christian joy survives the death and change that makes her experience of joy a zero-sum game. If we look carefully, we'll find an expression of God's love in everything we do, in the grace he gives us to do what is right, in the mercy he shows us when we fail. That's the way to begin, by looking for God's love. But finding it is not a one-time thing, and enjoying it is like, in fact it is, being in love. We have to work at it. We have to find joy in what comes our way. We have to learn to be joyful. Flannery O'Connor had a pen pal named Betsy Hester who started by writing fan mail to her and became a regular correspondent. They wrote back and forth almost every week. This, this was before texting. In one of her letters, O'Connor writes to Hester about what you call my struggle to submit. It is not, she says, a struggle to submit, but a struggle to accept and with passion. I mean, possibly with joy. Picture me with my ground teeth stalking joy. I don't know about the teeth grinding, but I agree about the struggle and the passion. Love is something we work at every day, and we give and accept it with passion. I mean, with joy. So, on this your last day at Catholic University, let me offer you three pieces of advice for finding joy. First, don't be fooled by pleasure. Zadie Smith is right about that. It won't give you lasting joy, and it can distract you from the real thing. 
This is true about beer and sex and BMWs, about fancy clothes and shiny phones and chic restaurants. Dana Joya puts it perfectly in one of his poems called Shopping. He says, I would buy happiness if I could find it, spend all that I possessed or could borrow. But what can I bring you from these sad emporia? Where, in all this splendid clutter, shall I discover the one true thing? Second, discover the thing in life that brings lasting satisfaction and make that your priority. Loving God, your neighbor, your vocation, this will bring you joy in the long run. Ask yourself, will this matter to me in 10 years, 30 years, 50 years? If it won't, don't waste your time on it. Finally, we have tried to teach you to find God in all things, not just in theology but in literature and music, in biology, engineering, and nursing. Christian joy begins with seeing God in all things. It's sustained by loving him in all things. But that requires that you don't stop looking for him. Look for God, love him, be joyful. So congratulations once again, class of 2013. You. You've been in school for at least 16 years, and if you can't take the hint, it's now time to leave. <laughs> but it's been a lovely place to be, so enjoy the last few minutes before you step out, and God bless you all.